we have our guest here. Uh, Mama Celeste is going to come and, and give us some financial uh, wisdom and knowledge. So I'm going to turn it over to Mama Celeste. Go ahead. Thank you for coming, everyone. Thank you, Mama Celeste. So thank you. I'm going to uh, share my screen, I hope. Okay. So it's kind of at the beginning of a new year. So we get a chance to assess where we are. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. So, you know, when you start doing your, your financial assessment, um, can everybody see that? Did I click it off? Yes, yes, it's, it, it's, we can see. Okay, then you need to figure out where you are in your life at this point. What is it that you're working for? Um, if you are still working, if you're retired, are you a student? Do you have young children? You know, what's going on? Are you taking care of somebody? So you need to kind of figure out where you are in order to, um, and then go on to set your goals. So do you have dependents? Is your health going to be an issue? Do you have debt? What are your goals? Are you trying to make it so that you can um, not work at all? Do you wanna work part-time? Do you wanna live in Africa? Do you wanna spend half the year there or half the year in Florida? Um, do you wanna go back to school? What is it that you want to do? And what you want to do, is it gonna cost you money? Is it gonna cost you time? Do you need to prepare? All those kinds of questions. And then once you figure out what it is you're trying to do, then you have to figure out, do you have enough income to meet your needs and to meet your goals? So after you figured that out, then we'll go to what financial advice and products do you need? Because depending on where you are in your life, you need different professionals to help you through it. And there's lots of information out there that's out there for free to get you started and know what to look for if you're looking at somebody that you're going to pay. So as you start creating your plan and part of figuring out where you are is to look at your credit report. Why are you looking at that? Because everybody else does, okay? Whether or not you have a good credit report can even determine whether or not you get a job. So you need to be able to check it out. You can get your credit report for free at that link, the annual credit report, and make sure that's the link you're looking at because that's the one that's free. There are other people who will link you to that, but they'll do it for a fee or they'll put you into um, a program. You know, Credit Report has a little uh, program that they run where they keep checking it and they send you stuff, but everybody's trying to get you to buy a service. This is free, you can get it once a year. During COVID, they were letting you get it all the time. I'm not sure that that's still the case, but you can get it once a year from all three credit reporting agencies. What it will not show you is your credit score. Okay, so your credit score would run from somewhere like 500 is uh, not too good, 800 is excellent. Um, but when you look at your credit report, you're looking to make sure that everything that's on it is accurate. Do you really have those accounts? Did you pay them off? Do they have wrong information about you? And if you find something that's not correct, it will also show you how to go about getting that fixed and getting that corrected. Um, because of your credit report, also when you start paying down your bills, something to keep in mind is that it shows over time. So when you see that credit report, it's going to show you every month how many months you were over 30 days past due. And that's usually when they start reporting on you being late with the payment. So you don't just want to all of a sudden pay it off after you've been late for a year. So you want a chance to build it up 
and show that yes, you're paying it on time and now you've paid it off. Um, whether or not you have a good credit score may determine whether or not you can get a loan and also how much you will pay for that loan, okay? Um, if you have excellent credit, you may be able to get a better interest rate on a loan than somebody that does not have a uh, good credit. And how much credit you have and how much of it you're using is a debt ratio that they use in determining whether or not you can buy a house. So if you need some help with your credit or your debt, uh, or you have questions or you're not sure, or you're considering bankruptcy or any of those kinds of questions, the website for consumer finance is a government website that lists all that information. So again, this is free. This is credit counseling or credit information that's going to point you to sources for credit counseling. That is free. You want to, uh, it'll tell you what to watch out for in your credit counseling services. And again, there are gonna be other things that pop up on your Google faster that are somebody trying to sell you something. So now you've got your credit report all straight and you need to figure out um, your plan for the future. So let's take a look and see, um, do you have enough money to retire? Do you have enough money to pay for dependent care? Who can tell you how much you need? These are all kinds of questions you're going to ask yourself as you start planning for the future. You're going to consider, I want you to consider joining AARP. You can join at 50 years of age. It's somewhere between 12 and $16 a year. They give you a lot of information, a lot of resources. They also do activities. Um, sometimes you get to watch a movie for free and they have discounts, but they would let you hook up to different activities like, like classes of different sorts. They'll tell you what social security changes they've been at. AARP is one of the largest um, voting blocks there is, and they work it. So, uh, and in the past, I'm not sure if it's currently true, there's been a person of color at the helm. So, you can also look at financial planners for information. And sometimes these financial planners will use a free meal as marketing. So go eat, listen to their information. It's good information that may or may not apply to you, but it'll give you some things to think about and you don't have to become their customer. That's what they want you to do, but it may not be there. And when you, um, sometimes they don't know whether you have money or not to register. Uh, you can also go to retirement seminars and financial planning seminars at community colleges from time to time, they'll offer them. And some financial planners are fee-based, which means they charge you by the hour to discuss or by the plan to discuss what it is that you want and need and how to go about getting it and what they offer. There are some others that earn a commission on what they sell you. So I tend to think that they're not as objective because they're gonna sell you what they're getting paid to sell you. Also, um, when I looked out in California at financial planners, there were some that wouldn't work with you unless you had at least $500,000 to invest. So um, many of us don't have $500,000 laying around waiting to go somewhere. So if you have a um, job that does uh, matching of your retirement plan, you do wanna make sure you're taking care of that. I'm sorry, that's not what I want you to see. The day-to-day -day of getting to this point means that you need to know what's going in and out of your money. that you have some sort of budget. And you may not write down what you want to do every time, but you need to have some starting form. 
you need to get a sense of where you are and what money's going out because we don't always think about it. Okay, can you see that? A spreadsheet? Well, just went away. Don't see the spread. Don't see the spreadsheet just yet. All right, where did it go? We see the uh, create your plan. Okay. Let me come back out of that and try that again. So what I'm trying to do, well, that's not looking real good, is it? Um, on the uh, budget is to write down all the things that go out. Yours may not have to do that. You may not need to, you may not need all the categories that I have but it's things that you need to figure out. Let me try this one more time. Aha. Okay. I evidently put it away. So give me just a second. Are there any questions um, that yes. are, that arose uh, for uh, Sister Celeste? Does anybody have some questions? Um, I know everybody here is uh, okay. Let's see. Uh, there's a question in the chat. Can you help us understand why the that important score is not in the free report? Well, all three of the agencies um, computed a little differently. So you may have one score in one place and a different score in another. Um, you can now get it. I don't know why they don't put it in there. I don't know if it's because it's not, it's a little subjective. It's according to them, it's not an absolute but I'm not sure that's their reasoning. Um, okay, that's what I want. Um, but if some of your credit cards in different places are now giving you your score for free, if you have an account with them. I use uh, Credit Karma and another one, Credit Karma, and there's one other that, uh, and they're always a little slightly, they're never both the same. Um, yeah. But they're, but between monitoring both of them, I'm able to stay pretty mm -hmm. much on top of it. I forget the name of the second one, but Credit Karma is free. Yeah, and it may be Experian, uh, Equifax, Equifax, and those are free. I also have Credit Karma. And um, I, I can pull it up. It's an app on my phone. I periodically check it because they send you a lot of stuff too. Uh, Credit Sesame. They do. Credit Sesame is the other one that's free. Okay. I have both of them on my phone and I check them every couple of days and, you know, they're always pretty close. Okay. Um, and each of the, the places like Asperian, you could contact them directly and they'll give you a free one. Uh, trans, un trans, trans union, trans union, and I found I've got a sheet. I've been deal doing credit cleanup for the last couple of months. There's a third. There's a fourth one now that I've never heard. The of. Transusion, Equifax, and Experian are the three credit agencies. They right. got a new one now. They got a fourth one. I've Do they? One. Yeah, I, I, I missed that one. one. Yeah, there's a fourth one that they've just come up with. And this is excellent because I think it's time for me to look at um, Experian, I think it is, because there's a 50 point difference in my, um, uh, in, in my scores. One of them is excellent, 797. The other one is 729. 
that's a big discrepancy. So it must be something on the lower one that needs to come off of there. I need right, to you do need out. to look at all three of them when you're looking to see that everything on there is correct. And right. they go back forever. And it can also okay, they go back to when you started having a credit account. So if that's 40, 50, 60 years, it's all on that credit report. And all creditors all credit don't report to all three agencies. So you could have done something. They do not. You could have done something in some place or had a late payment or a mistake or whatever with a card like that uh, only reports to trans. I just went through this. So that's why I know had a, a mm -hmm. card and they only reported to TransUnion. Um, it was a mistake. So my TransUnion credit profile dipped by 119 points based on a mistake by one card. It didn't affect my other two agencies because those two agencies didn't get the report. Only TransUnion did. So my and sometimes went 119 when, points on one reporting agency. The other two, it stayed the same. And sometimes when you clear something up with the lender, or the credit card company, they don't necessarily go back and clean up whatever's on your credit report. If it's been long enough for them to send something to your credit report, they may or may not go back and send in some kind of correction. So you do need to double check that to make sure everything is okay. Right, and when you do that check-in, they will then remove stuff that's not correct. Or they'll just um, say, oh, well, you know, it's not our responsibility to remove it. That's what I was told years ago. So you have to call yourself and get things removed and look at those reports. And it's also, like she's saying, good to get all three. You can get a paper report. And I got all three years ago and looked at all three of them. And there were differences on each of them. Right. And you can get it on your computer and download whatever it is, because you can get it on your computer instantly and download the report to your um, files. So what I hope you're seeing on your screen is a budget form. So it has income, whatever sources you're getting money from, you want to write down what that is. And for your wages and salary, you're going to write down what you get to take home. OK. Um, then whatever you spend for housing, for gas, and I'm talking about natural gas, like for heating or for your house, depending on where you are in the country. Um, your, your utilities, you may or may not pay those depending on and where you live. So your cable bill, your phone, your car note, your car insurance, your house insurance, your medical insurance. Do you have dependents that you're taking care of? Um, be it your kids or your spouse or your partner, um, that care gets in there and that's important. What you're spending for gas, uh, maybe you take, uh, do a combination of driving and public transportation. So you have a clipper card or ride share that you use. Do you get groceries and fast food? The fast food counts and can add up. Your tithing, your entertainment, whatever kind of repairs and maintenance you're doing to, if you have a house, a uh, condo, something around there, when you go get your hair cut or your nails done, what are you paying for the internet? Are you saving? And that should be part of your budget. You wanna plan that, you wanna pay yourself. So you count that in on a monthly basis. You need an emergency fund because some things are going to come up. You also need to keep some cash at your house. If the power goes out, you can't get gas because that's electric, the pumps won't work. And you also can't get to the ATM because that won't work. Those are all electric. So you need to keep some cash on hand. Are you giving gifts? Are you have a travel plan that you're coming up with? your dues and membership, your health that you pay out of your pocket, your prescription co-pays, your doctor co-pays, your investments should also be something that you're planning for because there are ways to invest that uh, you can do regularly that don't cost a lot of money. Maybe they're $25 a month. Uh, if you have to pay for your waste and recycling, if you have any loans, student loans, do you have a, a second mortgage or a house equity loan on your property, your credit cards and your taxes? Uh, if you're paying property taxes, 
then you need to, uh, you can do it two ways. You can put some money aside every month so that when they're due, it's not a huge amount, but you can't bother it once you set it aside. Or you can go ahead and pay it that one lump sum, but that's usually a pretty big hit out there in California. Um, your credit cards, if you have a lot of them, I would suggest that you make a list of the credit cards and how much the balance is and how much the interest rate is. So you can ask if you've been paying on time and being a good customer, you can ask them to reduce your interest rate. But I would say that you want to pay off the um, highest interest rate first. Because interest rates can run somewhere between 6 and 30%. So if you're paying 30% and you've been carrying a balance for a year, that means that you've paid 30 cents more for every dollar that you have on that chart. So if you got it on sale for 50%, 30% off, you just wiped out your savings. May even cost you a little more. Um, once you have this done and you want to write it down once because you usually think about the big things, but you don't think about the little things. You may not think about getting your hair done. If you're a person who uh, doesn't do well with cash, then you need to work with your financial institution or with your creditors on ways of paying things. I prefer to set up things through um, from my side where I use a bill pay service that I set up and I set the date for because every now and then you may not have money on that date and you may need to change it around a little bit. It's more trouble to change it around if you're calling the creditor to do that. You can also ask creditors to change your due date. So if you get paid on the 1st and 15th and your due date is on the 10th and you don't have any money by the 10th, then you can ask them to change it to the 20th so that it flows better with your money flow. I put this down um, in winter budget and then what you to keep track of what you're actually spending. So you can put the actual in here if that makes it better for you, or you can put paid in here, either one of those, or you don't have to write it down. But if you're trying to figure out what where your money's actually going and you write it down there, that helps. I talked to a friend of mine last night and says, I, I lost you know, two or three months. I wasn't paying my bills, but I don't know where the money went. I don't know what happened to it. So. Uh, in this case, it's like he doesn't know whether or not he lost it or he spent it on something. So um, if you write it down, actually, you can see your budget may not change. Once you do it once for the year, that might be it. You don't need to do it. But a lot of times your utility cost changes. Maybe you have that on a budget, so that wouldn't change either. But if you don't, then your heating bill or your uh Electricity for air conditioning in the summer may change your, your dollars amounts. It may be that you get a raise, so your income changes. Uh, so you might want to break it up and do it in quarters and go through the whole thing again. You don't have to, but you want to take stock at some point to see where you are. If you add this up and your income amount is smaller than your expenses, there's a bit of a problem there because you're always going to be in the hole. You're not going to be able to pay off your credit cards. And so if it's, then you start looking for ways to decrease whatever your expenses are. So if you've had the same insurance and not had it redone, then you might be time for you to call and let people quote you again. You do need to check the prices of things because they change through the years. Um, you have all of those things to do. And let's see. Can you see? Nope, you cannot.
Okay, so when you're trying to check out where you are, um, you want to go back through that budget and those things that you have done redo, which is not what this slide says. You wanna go back and check your, are you getting the best cable deal? And if you threaten to leave them, they'll come back with a better price. Are you getting the kind of cell service you need? Do, is your insurance what you need it to be on your car? Are you carrying too much or too little? The same thing for your house. And um, you know, insurance may get ready to go up now that it's been raining there and they've had property damage from water. You need to make sure if your coverage is good and look at your deductibles, okay? Is that a price that you can afford? So after you get set with what you're doing immediately or for this next year, then you wanna look out a little bit further. Do you have a will? If you own anything, you need a will. You need a will to tell your family what you want to do. Because if there's a way to argue, it could happen. Um, there are free resources for your will. AARP does one, that's the top line. And the other one was sent out by SF Jazz. They sent a link because they want you to donate to them and leave them in your estate planning. So other places will do it. Red Cross will send you a free will. I have not looked at them to see what they ask, but you start building your will online. Um, I don't know that I would put anything identifying or really personal in something I completed online, but that's me. I'm very leery of putting personal information out online because if one person can see it, another person can break into it, is my feeling. So you might wanna follow what they have or print it out and then put in what you want there and retype it. So a lot of times there are ads in the paper or people want to sell you a trust and people making trusts come up with all kinds of prices. And there are a couple of different kinds of trust and it depends on whether or not you need one. So you would need to talk to somebody and really need to see what you want. And again, you want to talk to more than one person. So- Excuse me, yes. excuse me. Uh, so I have a question. Um, I've always been uh, taught or I've just heard um, that it's better to have a trust than a, than a will. What's, what's the difference? Why would you, why would you want one uh, above the other? Well, your will gives people instructions, okay? I want um, the guardianship of my children to go to so-and-so. I want um, my personal effects to go to so-and-so. I want my car to go to Uncle Bob. I want my clothes to go to my daughter. I want my jewelry to go wherever, okay? Mm -hmm. The trust uh, that most of them that I know about either you have a lot of money and you're setting up trusts that are more complicated that say uh, you have these investments and you put them actually in the trust, okay? So the trust actually holds your property. And if it's holding investments, then you could have a trust fund and that's what they're calling like the trust fund babies. And then that trust has instructions on what to do. You don't want to release these funds until somebody is 30 years old. You want to release it to two of your kids and not the third one. So the trust has stuff in it and then directions of what happens to the things that are in your trust. So you can put your house in the trust. So again, you want to talk to somebody and see if you need it because there are ways of passing your house on without having it be in the trust and still avoid probate. But it depends on where you live, what you can do. So you need to talk to an expert. There is something called um, 
transfer upon death. And I'm not sure that that happens in California. There was a clause in Indiana, and I believe there's one down here in North Carolina. And that's simply all it is with where your um, deed is recorded that you say transfer upon death to X, Y, Z. You don't, we want to avoid probate is the, the end game here because probate is expensive and it's very slow and it tends to be public. A lot of your information is out there. Okay. Yeah. That's my chief yes. understanding Thank you. Thank you. between the difference of trust and uh, wills is that trust uh, allows you to avoid probate, especially here in, in California. Right. And these are things that, and, and your will may have, you know, some instructions in it, but those things you also need to keep available. Don't stick it in your uh, safety deposit box, because if your will has your last instructions and says how you want to be buried and where you have a, a cemetery plot and so forth and so on, what your accounts are, how to get to them, at the point where you've passed away, they need to be able to get to this in order to take care of your last wishes. I have another. I tell, it's like you want to ask a question. Yeah, yeah, I have another question that I put in the chat, and it, it was it had to do with uh, what what is the difference because we were talking about scores earlier. What's the difference in a, a FICO score and a credit score? Nothing. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. I, that's just the name of one of the scores, okay. but it's your credit score. All right. Thanks. Uh huh. Um, you also need to have a living will. Some places call it a durable power of attorney. Who do you want to make decisions for you when you can't speak for yourself? And you also outline how far you want them to go if there's nobody handy to speak up for you. And they've probably asked you if you have one, or they kept asking me when I was out there every time I had a doctor's appointment or you go to the emergency room. So you need to think this through. You need to figure out what you want done. Some people want everything possible done to prolong their life. Other people say, nope. Just let me go. Don't resuscitate me. Other people say, just feed me, give me water. You have to decide on what that's going to be. And that needs to be worked out. And you then you pick a person that's going to make those decisions for you. And you know, your your child or your partner may not be that person. Okay. They may be a person that's going to be so upset that they're not going to make a judgment or they may substitute what they want for what you want. Okay. You want to be let go. They want to hold on. So uh, you have to look at that. Then um, also depending on how much you have and what's going on, you might need a power of attorney for everything else. And this is, You've got your medical power of attorney going on. They're going to decide what happens to you. But what if you can't make a decision for months? Or what if you've got um, dementia? Somebody needs to make decisions on what's going to happen to your bills, your house, your property, your accounts. So who's going to be that person? And again, you want to think about that carefully. Who's going to do what you want done? And you can choose what you give that person the authority to do. You can let them do some things and not others. You can have you know, more people. You can let them take care of your real estate. You can make it only your real estate and they can't touch anything else. Um, if you have things like insurance policies, investment accounts, uh, your 401, your retirement fund, it's your job, you have beneficiaries, make sure they're updated, okay? I did mine years ago. One of my beneficiaries is my parents. They're both deceased. So you wanna make sure you've updated that. Uh, do you have a payable on death clause on your bank accounts? So this is, 
if you have an account that's not a joint account, I'm single, I'm the only one on my checking account. If I'm sick, they still can't get in it, but if I die, they can get to it. Because if I put a payable on death clause, as soon as they walk in and say, I'm dead and have a death certificate, they can get access to that account. That's the account that's gonna be first thing they can get to, to pay for my funeral, which I don't want, to pay off my bills, whatever. Get them some immediate cash if they need it. And then that account goes to them. It doesn't have to go to the courts. It doesn't have to do anything else. You've taken care of that one account or two or three. Um, we talked about not putting it in the safety deposit box. And you need to make sure how things are recorded especially if you did it a while back, you need to make sure that you do have a deed, that it is in your name and that it is recorded so that they don't have any difficulty trying to process your property afterward. And as I talked about earlier, you wanna find out the easiest way in your area to pass that on. So does your situation require that you pass it in trust? Can you just put a transfer on death? Pay, you know, give this to so and so. Did I have a quick I... question, Mama. Uh huh. I'm sorry. Um, about your um debts, are they payable upon your debt? Like, you have a credit card balance and you die. Can they go into your bank account and take what, their money? Uh, they can't just go into it, but you would still owe it. They can still come after your estate. They still do. That was yes. my question. Okay, yes, thank they you. They still do. Are there any other questions? So. I think you've been very, very clear and very thorough. And um, it's been very refreshing because I've been kind of checking myself as you've gone through your presentation. And, uh, and I've seen a couple of areas that I have to uh, uh, get up to speed on. And But uh, many of the things you suggested, I'm very much on track with that. And so that just kind of, um, kind of validates um, uh, where I'm at and and what I've uh, already done. Well, that's very good uh, because even though I've written them down for you, I haven't done them all. So I have a prayer going with the Lord. Please don't let me die before I get my stuff straight. We have a couple. I don't want to leave it as a problem for my child. We have a couple of uh, uh, questions. So uh, first one is Minister Amadi, and then uh, Sugar D is next. Go ahead, Minister Amadi. Yes. Hello, what, what a wonderful uh, presentation to start our year so we can get our stuff in order. This is yes. beautiful, really what we need. So my question is, I hear a lot about insurance policies. Everybody's saying, you know, you need to get you a whole life insurance policy and be your own banker. And so what can you tell us about the, the viability or the advisability of insurance? Well, there are many different kinds of insurance policies. So first of all, if what, what need are you trying to cover with your insurance? Okay, are you trying to provide uh, enough money to pay off your house? Are you trying to provide enough money to take care of your kids? Are you trying to provide enough to get them through school? So you have to figure out what you're trying to ensure. If you are not married, don't have any kids to take care of, don't have any obligations or dependents, you may not need insurance, okay. life insurance, okay? Now, life insurance, some policies do carry it now where it allows you to pull out the cash value in case you were sick, you could pull it out and use the money that's been accumulated into that policy. And you really need to talk to an insurance person about that. 
the big difference between whole life insurance and term life insurance is that term life is usually cheaper, but it's for a term. So once you stop paying for term life insurance, you don't have it anymore. And you don't have the money that you paid for, it's gone. Whole life insurance accumulates some of that money over time. So if you um, stop the policy, then you have a cash value that's, go that's going to come back to you. Uh -huh. Did that kind of help? Yeah, that did. It's just that I hear more people talk. I hear always people talking about, you know, be your own banker, get your whole life policy and and then therefore, if you need money, you can borrow it from yourself and you don't have to pay interest you and can. all that. And that's what I'm kind of thinking about. And yeah, you my can. purpose is really is my purposes would be to leave generational wealth for my daughter. That would be why I would, um, you know, I'm kind of like down the road. And now, you know, I just kind of want to make sure that I, um, you know, leave something for my, uh, you know, my, my, my right. daughter. You can look into that, into the insurance being an option with a with an insurance broker. Um, there's some financial planners that may talk about the different kinds of policies for you. And you also, you need to discuss with a financial planner and an investment advisor, which is the best tool to get to where you wanna go. Yes, you can accumulate money in your insurance policy and take a loan from yourself. But if you're taking a loan from yourself on your policy, that decreases the amount of money that's in there. I okay. See. However, I do believe that they will always pay face value. Okay, thank you. Right. That was good. That was great. Right, uh, next up, uh, Sugar D, go ahead. Hey, Sister Celeste, this has been fantastic. I've been checking off the, the line items and, and I'm, I'm somewhat on task. But I, I just wanted to make a comment and I did have a question. The comment I wanted to make was when I when my husband died, I went to see my financial advisor, uh, who's also a friend, and his, um, he, he told me, he said, your husband doesn't have an estate, period. He, he does not have an estate. And so I, I was not responsible for the hospital bill. My name wasn't on it anyway, nor, or any of his, we were not, we, he wasn't in a lot of debt anyway. It was very minimal, actually. I, I don't even think it was $2,000, but he told me we don't have an estate because I was, my concern was the hospital bill. And he said, you don't have an estate, so you don't. Right, if you don't have anything for them to come after, you don't have an estate. Right. But when didn't you, say you guys own your home? Didn't when, you own your home? Yep. Yeah. And that that was not included. That wasn't his considered? name. His name is on. It was on the is on the um house. Yeah, and I and it was a car in his name, but now it's in mine. Uh, so you know, I mean, in fact, both cars were in his name because he gave the car one of my car to me as a gift, and we never did change the names over. But I changed all of that over. Um, no, nope, I haven't gotten any, and it's been almost three years going on coming up. Well, three years this year. And, uh, and basically I don't, he said, you don't have an estate. He does not have an estate. You, that's what you say. You, he does not have one. Okay. So, so I mean, I'm, that's, yep. That's why you need to talk to the experts to right. figure that out. Right. And, uh, another part with having an estate is if, um, if there's the possibility that somebody is going to need long-term care, um, long-term care insurance has gone up considerably. When they started it, they didn't think it was gonna cost them very much, so it wasn't very expensive. Now that they figured out it's gonna cost a small fortune, then the insurance premiums are higher. Gotcha. Uh, Medicare does not cover long-term care. It doesn't cover nursing home care. It'll give you 100 days in a nursing home. So if you think that you're going to need somebody to have care and have 24-hour care and want some help, you need to figure out how that goes. Some things are different if you have a spouse and what they can take or use for it. 
um, they there's some very uh, if you're trying to get the government to pay for stuff, they're real peculiar about you getting assets away from them. So there's a timeline on it, and I don't remember what that is anymore. But it's something like if you've given your house away within the last five years, then that's still your asset when they start counting up what you have. Mm -hmm. So you need to do that planning in advance as well. And I had one other question real quick. Um, is it any way that I could get a copy of this PowerPoint? You can send it to me through my email or something, please. I know we can sure. go back and look at it. <laughs> as soon as I figure out how to save it and send it to you. <laughs> okay. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You've helped okay. me a lot. Okay. So I'm not sure where this is going because I got PowerPoint when um, I was going to school. And so my, my uh, subscription is gone, but it still let me in here. So we'll see what happens next. All right, uh, Sister Saraswati, go ahead. I'm good well, at one can always save a PowerPoint as a PDF. I hope so. I'll look into that. Good evening, Sister Celeste. I just wanted to say um, your knowledge and understanding of the financial system is, I just so appreciate your depth. I mean, it doesn't matter you speak about it like you talk about it all the time and you just make it seem so easy and accessible, but, um, you know, of course it's a struggle. So well, I thank you. retired and um, my um, financial person has been trying to get me to do that budget that you had, that you had listed. And um, I have struggled mightily with, you know, tracking stuff to the point where She's asked me to uh, use a credit card for everything and then just, you know, back into it. And even that, you know, I've struggled with <laughs> you know, things like every two months, you know, you put it in this month or that month, split it in half. You know, I could be just, you know, the, the technician in me that just wants everything to be, you know, right to the point. And I fought back because I said, as long as the top line is larger than the bottom line, you know, like go away. But she said, um, you know, like you really need to know where your money goes. It's just not okay for you to just skate through. You really need to have an understanding so that if you um, something happens, you know what you can cut, you know, and stuff like that. One thing that did come out of it is I went back to many of my commitments and renegotiated values. And you are right. They were more than happy to, you know, reduce the rate sometimes even in half. And that is something that I never would have thought about as a working adult. And so now um, I'm in the process of reevaluating my insurance, but it's something that I probably could have done, you know, 10 years ago. But, you know, when you're working, you just, you just think about it without really realizing when it really matters. So and then just one final thing, I, I clearly did not uh, do something correct. My brother-in-law, uh, when he passed, I was, my sister was unavailable in a coma. I oh had a date and, um, you know, I was thinking about his daughters and, you know, and um, anytime somebody called me, like his college loans, anything at all, I said, he's dead. Yes, and I didn't pay anybody anything at all. I just put the money away. And then when the girls got 18, et cetera, I gave them the money. Um, so, but no one did anything about it. I would send them a copy of the death certificate, but um, I did not realize that there was any kind of, um, um, that I should have done something different. So um, I... Well, I guess my mom didn't have any accounts by that time. And they won't always come after you. Some people are uh, more aggressive than others. There's some that just say the person has passed away and, and that's it. They don't, they don't pursue it any further. Um, oh, and to your statement about getting it done, I started using a credit card for everything with COVID. I didn't do that before because it cost the person, it costs the business three, four, five percent. 
every time you are using the credit card. Now, out in California, there were places that were charging fees for that. I hadn't seen. I was very surprised when I first got there and went to buy gas. And they said, if you're going to charge it, we want 45 cents. And it's like, oh, OK. So but now when they went through, we don't have any change. You have to have exact change or whatever. I started charging everything and I don't feel bad about it. And that includes when I went through the fast food line and it was, you know, three or four dollars. And some of your credit cards will categorize it for you if they can tell by the name. So when you get your bill, some will do it by the month, some do it at the end of the year. They will tell you how much you paid for gas and how much you paid for restaurants and how much you paid for clothing. So you could do that. You could get a card and use it all the way. And if you're going to do that, I would suggest that um, whatever card you pick or that you open an account for that. And when you charge everything that month, instead of paying cash, that at the end of the month, you do pay it off entirely. So that keeps you from getting the uh, interest charged on it. It also looks great on your credit report. So that's one way to, to make it look pretty good. So, um, and then you can also yeah. sometimes get the benefits of the uh, cash back and rewards. I've been playing that game for the last year and putting everything on the card. And I do a list every month and each card has different things that they'll like give you 5% this month on that. I keep a they list do. of all that. And I only put the card in my pocket that has like the big reward of something I'll use and pay it off at the end of the month. Um, oh, you're so organized. I, not only do I make, you know, get my credit up, keep the expenses down, but I actually get money back on everything that I'm buying. I've been really pumped about this because I am a historic, terrible financial person. I have to file out bankruptcy twice. Um, I've had terrible credit all my life, except for now because I learned this lesson during the pandemic and I concentrated on credit and finance and I listened to budget, Tiffany, the budget Easter. And for the first time in my life, I have excellent credit. I'm, I've had terrible credit all my life, but as of today, knock on wood and I keep on my program because if you slip for a half a second, it's over. Um, but yeah, I've, I'm very pleased with that. Tiffany, the budget Easter, she saved my life. Very good, very good. Um, before we go to our new tooth, th this slide, Darnisha, tell us about the investment uh, group. Um, the investment group uh, that we're a part of, Celeste is a part of it, and there's a number of people in the, the Oakland Wose who are a part of the New African Investment Association. Um, the New African Investment Association is um, kind of related to uh, the, the Republic of New Africa, uh, those folks that are always saying free the land. Um, and it is a investment group that is composed of 10 different groups. Each group represents a county and each county is a predominantly majority black county along the Mississippi River Valley. Um, we are each independent investment groups. The group that Wose and that I'm a part of is Warren County. Um, you have a very minimal amount that you have to uh, uh, contribute to be a full member. And it's like, I don't know, three, $400. It's very reasonable, but it's very, it's a traditional stock investment club. It's not crypto. It's nothing fancy or, you know, nothing, nothing real interesting. It's just basic uh, stock. Um, and we have very well-run, organized uh, meetings where we go through um, the, the, we repeat why we're doing it. We repeat our rules. Um, the rules are, the first rule is don't lose the people's money, or that are the first principle. Um, and then asset allocation, making sure that we understand what it is we're trying to invest in and how much we want to do. Diversification, making sure all our eggs are not uh, in one basket. 
um, and paying attention to the news, understanding what's happening in the world and how it impacts your money. Uh, we have this discussion once a month. At the end of that, every single month, our uh, balance has increased and we have now, we, there's a, a, a share price to be involved now. Our share price has increased pretty much every month all through this uh, pandemic. And my money is mine. It's in a pool with a lot of other people, but if I wanna go and take my money out and buy something with it, I can, but I have most of us simply just keep uh, reinvesting. The ultimate goal of this association, um, it's I'm in, a, in one of 10. The 10 have an overall organization called the Alliance of which I'm also in the, uh, or I'm also on the board of the Alliance that kind of looks at all uh, 10 of them. And the ultimate goal is to have a financial institution, a black financial institution, so that when we want to build things uh, and open businesses, that we have our own pool of money uh, to pull from, and that we're also educating ourselves as a community so that we know what's happening, that we can uh, grow our money in the wisest way possible. Uh, it is a private group. You can't just sign up. Uh, you have to be invited. You have two members here on this call who I'm sure would love to invite you if you are interested in participating. So I um, like this idea for three reasons. It's Black, it's affordable, and you learn what you're doing, why you're making this investment or that investment or what's been going on. You're not kind of, I mean, I guess you could do it blindly if you didn't want to pay any attention, but you start getting some kind of idea of how the stocks and bonds and funds work. And so it also makes it a, um, uh, you can do it over time where you have a very small monthly payment that you're doing, you're not investing any large sums of money, or you could, but you don't have to. So um, there are also funds available that you can invest small amounts of money in. And you can kind of look at the paper, different things, different products work different ways. And they have, um, in terms of the economy, they work better or not so well, depending on that. So you need to find somebody that's versed in that kind of investment to give you an idea. Uh, everybody was real upset because the stocks and bonds went down. Well, usually if the stocks are up, the bonds are down. If the stocks are down, the bonds are up. But lots of funds all over the place went down and people were losing lots of money before we got to the crypto thing. And so, you see people losing money on that. But now there are also different things that are out there that you can just do on your phone, okay? You can do all your shopping without ever leaving your house. They'll bring you everything there is. They'll deliver it, your food, your medicine, your groceries. You can set up investments from a financial institution that only exists online. But you really need to know who you're dealing with and try the, your best to figure out that it's not a scam. They're getting really, really good at scams. Every time something new comes up, somebody figures out a way to rip you off. Um, I would say basically, if you're looking at something that, uh, and you're checking it out online and you get the exact same verbiage that one thing copied from another. So you wanna go a little further in figuring that out. Um, I can't tell you how to, to, to figure out that they're real other than you just really need to do it. And bear in mind, if it looks like it's too good to be true, it probably is. Um, and and was, this is the last one other made off. One other, one other quick part of that is the generational wealth. That, that's a big component of the investment club too the generational wealth yes. to okay. pass it down. So um... we have a question. We have, um, we have a question that's in uh, the chat and it's saying, is there any uh, credit 
slash debit card, which offers transaction details, i.e. receipts as a part of the account records statement. I'm not All sure I understand that question. Well, I'm, I'm reading- That was me. And I'm asking about eliminating paper receipts by having the credit card company keep the detailed receipt that says, I got this item, this item, this item, this item at the store. Is that possible? I have not seen that where it does an itemized receipt except for a plane ticket. On the statement, it'll tell you where the trip was to. Okay. So um, you can get your receipts emailed from a lot of people so that it's not paper. Yes, I just haven't climbed that hill yet and accepted the idea of handing everyone my email address. I get a, a okay. Well, you can set up an email address that you put that stuff to. Like I have a, uh, a J Doe email address. I forgot that. Yes, I can. Mm hmm. So, and then uh, I said they'll they'll categorize it for you at the end of the year, but I'm not. But that's for the whole sale of whatever they sold you. Yes, thanks for the reminder. Itemized. I can just set up an account, bills, receipts, dot whatever, Gmail or whatever, and then that's where they are. Exactly. Thanks. You're welcome. All right. Um, well, we're getting so much uh, now that I feel like we need to be paying for this. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Mama Darnisha has put in the uh, uh, website for the Alliance in the chat. Um, how, how is that uh, pronounced, uh, Darnisha? Oh, my goodness. You're going to test me. Uh, Anita, uh, Alliance of New African Economic Development Associations. There, I passed the test. Yay. Ah, you did. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the overarching organization. Um, I'm working on the website right now. So it's, it's in pretty good shape and the information will give you a good snapshot of where we are. But if you see a typo or some blank space, it's because I'm still working on it. So that's good. And so the last thing about people researching and looking at stuff on Google, um, there are other places to do searches. I haven't been out on anywhere else in forever. But Google doesn't have any uh, checks to say that what appears on Google is the truth. So anybody can buy a website and they can put whatever they want on it. So you can't, you have to, to figure out more places to look and try and verify information. Also, you want to see um, when this information went up. And a lot of times they, they're not dates on whatever you're looking for as a source. So you have to kind of work for that. Um, the credit union that I talked about last time has the different financial literacy courses that are free. There's something called Investopia that has different kinds of information on it uh, that's available. And for your investments or for ideas of doing things or different vehicles, um, say that you're going to do the property tax thing uh, and you want to save for it every month so that you have it ready. You could put it into CDs, and I can't remember when property tax is due out there, but say it's due in July, and you're going to put it in for January. So you have February, March, April, May, June. That's five months. So you want to buy a five-month CD with this month's money. So say you're saving $1,000 for your property tax this month. Next month in February, you would buy a four month CD and in March, you'd buy a three month CD and you want to buy them for as long as you need them, because at the end, when they're all mature, you're going to take it out and pay your uh, property tax with it. If you pull it out early, there's a penalty. So that is kind of an incentive for you not to try and take your money out that you put it aside and you can't touch it. 
IRAs are a retirement savings account that has some tax benefits. A regular savings account is there that you can set up. They're not, they're starting to pay better dividends. They haven't been paying real well. Real estate is still a good place to invest things. Um, if you get heavy duty on being an investor, there are different kinds of real estate things you can do. There are real estate trust, and that's beyond what I know about. I just know that they're there. They are um, straight up stocks and bonds that you can do, and people are uh, day trading. That's something I don't do either, but it's you don't have to have people do all of these things for you if you have educated yourself enough and you wanna go out there and venture into that. Um, and then there are funds. And so funds uh, are put together a lot of different ways. There might be funds that are focused on the um, climate. There may be funds that are focused on global uh, companies. Mm -hmm. So you can find funds that do different things and you still kind of want to look at that in your retirement accounts. They'll show you what the funds are that they're doing and look at what's in it and see whether not how that fund is doing. But it's more than one company. So your, your risk and so forth is sort of spread over a variety of things that are in that fund. We talked about your retirement account. You want to make sure that if you're... Uh -huh. um, some of your retirement accounts, you have to start pulling uh, at a certain age. I believe it's 70. And if you are still working and you have a retirement account, your employer may match your retirement uh, deposit. So you want to save as much as they will match at least. You don't want to leave any money on the table. So and we just talked about the investment club and sometimes individuals get together and form an investment club. So are there any other questions? Um, yes, how did, you, uh, how did you get interested in all this stuff? <laughs> I, um, My mama taught me how to write out a check when I was a kid. I thought that was fun. She had deposit slips. Nobody understands that now because they don't have to write out deposit slips anymore. But I started doing that. And my mother was one that was very much into budgets. And some people would budget where they would, she would actually take envelopes and split up the money. You know, this is the house envelope. This is the food money. This is the such and such kind of money. So that's what I grew up with. You know, once you got a job, you had to start paying rent. So it wasn't anything colossal. When I um, went to college, I wanted to be a doctor. And then I took biology and chemistry and figured out I wasn't going to make it that way. So I ended up majoring in business administration. And I've been going to college off and on forever. So I also ended up working on a master's in public administration. So that took me to the accounting courses and so forth. So um, the part with the credit union is, uh, I did okay with the accounting. I add and subtract real well with the money and balance my checkbook, and I want things balanced to the penny and so forth. And so uh, boards of directors for credit unions and their supervisory committee are volunteer positions, and they will teach you what you need to know in order to do that. And for the directors is to be able to read a financial statement. So you can take a course in learning how to do that as well. So also in part of my life, I was a computer programmer and I worked on some financial applications. Oh, what, what language were you uh, using? I did Assembler, oh, VL. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm not quite that old, but I am. <laughs> so your programs were on punch cards and you didn't want to drop them. No, no. So, and you had to take your program to an operator to run it for you. 
to see if it was going to work and then come back and start to fix it all over again. That's when okay. I went to uh, the, the first job with computers, they were showing me the computer room and they were so proud that their new computer was about the size of a buffet table instead of the whole room. So now the power that that computer has is probably in your cell phone or your laptop. Yeah. So, yeah. but I also did COBOL and an airline language called SaberTalk. COBOL, assembler, my goodness. Yes. Okay. We. Okay. That's some history there. Bill, you know anything about that? That's the... <laughs> I bet he does. I bet he does. Yeah, yeah oh, he course. probably knows a lot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Saber talks legendary. Right. How about you, Saraswati? That seems like something you might know about too. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Are there any other questions? Boy, we've gotten a, a lot of uh, a lot of really good information. Uh, anything you, that you want to close? We have about fifteen minutes uh, left. Oh, there was one thing I forgot to to mention. Um, when you're looking at everything again, you want to look at your bank accounts and your checking account as well. Everybody keeps changing their products. They keep, you know, adding bells and whistles and what you can do and what you can't do. You want to try real hard not to pay. You want to get an account that fits what your needs are. And you don't want to pay fees if you can avoid it. The credit union is really good for that. Um, you may want to deal with a financial institution that has values and a mission statement that fits you. Um, but it's real important to see what people are doing and how they've changed whatever, because your needs change over time. You know, it may be, I haven't had checks on some accounts in forever. I never had a check because that was the way they were offering it as a, a green initiative. And so I don't have any checks for that account. There are very few things that I write checks for. Another so. good uh, note for folks to, uh, with credit cards and the crazy fees and stuff, um, how, how easy it is to get them waived if you are not in the habit of doing it. If you really, yes. you know, if you do it all the time, forget it. They're not messing with you. But, you know, that once or twice a year that you really had an emergency and something happened and you were just late and uh, you got charged a $50 fee or $30 fee and they may have deemed your credit at the same time, you can actually just contact them. There are ways to contact them. Generally for the late fee, all you have to do is call and whoever asks the phone, talk to them nicely, explain, and they generally will just take that first one or two late fees away. Um, and for, they've taken it off even when it's been my screw up. Yeah, you know, well, I, I thought I, I set the payment, but I didn't, you know, no, you didn't do anything. I just forgot to pay you or I didn't set up my account right. And they look to see if you're a person in good standing on your account generally. And we'll usually wipe it off for you. My 119 uh, point dip, you know, and I've been really doing my credit. I finally got close to 650 and then I had this uh, 119 point dip. And I was like, what happened? I pay my bills on time every month. Well, during the month of September, I was really stressed out and I missed one bill on the lowest, most chintzy credit card that I have. It was I didn't even owe them any money. It's just that it's such a ghetto card that they charge me like $6 a month and I don't want to close it because that messes up your credit too. I didn't pay their little $6 fee that they put on. That cost me 119 credit points. It took my credit from excellent to nearly terrible overnight. And I, it was my mistake. I, I did it. And I was honest with them. I told them I did it. I apologized profusely and begged for grace and mercy. And it took about 30 days of, you know, going back and forth and talking to folks and getting elevated to the special crisis people. But at the end of that, they took those 119 points and they gave them back to me. Not only did they take that off and put me back up to my excellent but they took the late payment off because I was so upset that I had these years of 100% no late. And that just hurt my feelings when I saw 99%. Um, they even took that away. 
And so I am back up to 100%, but it's because I stopped, I talked to them, I wrote some letters um, and I stayed on top of it. And somebody told me that I could do it because I had no idea that this was even possible. But I have a friend who's just been working on credit hacks for the last year. Uh, some of you guys know Nolan Jones. Nolan's been on this. He shared the information with me. I did exactly what he told me to do and exactly what he said happened, happened. And I've even asked them, um, I have a card that I pay for the because they give me uh, airline points, reward points. And I have said, I'm gonna close my account because I don't wanna pay you anymore. And they went, is that the only reason? And I said, yep. And they fixed it, it went away. Wow. Well, these, option people are, is these people are not cooperating because the credit card is one of those fix it, fix your credit that I got when my credit was terrible. So they got those credit card companies that deal with bad people. And this was one of them. And they have terrible deals, high interest rates, and they don't negotiate because they figure you're in, you're over the barrel. You're stuck. Right. Mm -hmm. right. You're over the barrel if you're dealing with us anyway. So, so um, but that's another place where that... Um, credit that government credit counseling site may come in handy another option for some people might be uh if you um have credit card debt and if it's like most of the credit cards they really kind of ramp the interest rates up over the last uh, couple of years you know i'm talking 17 18 percent um is uh to do a personal loan um which was an approach yes. that that I took. Uh, you know, I I had a personal loan for six for six percent, and um, my credit card interest had had gotten up to fifteen, fourteen, and fifteen percent on two cards. So it was uh, economically feasible for me to go ahead and take a personal loan at six percent and wipe these guys out. Yes, I um... done that a couple of times. I have an account that I've been trying to pay off every month. And so I wasn't even cognizant of the interest rate on it. And it said 29%. I about yes. died. It's outrageous. <laughs> Just outrageous credit card and interest rate. Over the last two or three years, uh, I watched it grow on these credit cards. And I'm thinking, well, you know, if these guys, if they go one more percent, I'm going to get a personal loan and just wipe yeah, it all it was, out really kind of crazy because the interest rates on loans and houses and mortgages and that kind of thing were were down the the interest that you were being paid for your savings was down but your credit card interest was ridiculously high <laughs> ramping up yes oh and also sister celeste i uh, i took out a, a membership at the uh, berkeley co-op cooperative uh, credit union as well and, um, oh, wonderful. Now you can run for the board. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've pretty much got my hands full right now, but um, uh, that was a yeah. good move. And uh, uh, they gave me a, a, a pretty good deal on a new credit card as well. So, Very good. Um, it was it was a good move for me. Very good. Wow. That's so that's wonderful. Anyone else uh, would like to jump in before we have about seven minutes? Anybody else wanna 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 share some wisdom? I see Thandi way there. She's taking notes. Uh. <laughs> so, and that's another reason to uh, do that budget and to write it down is to um, take a look at what you're paying a lot for. Um, so that you write down those credit cards and you figure out how much they're charging you and what they're charging you for late fees because the late fees have increased as well. Um, I had one account I missed and the late fee was more than what I owed. So I think I owed them $33 and the late fee was $40. So they couldn't charge me more than the balance. So they charged me the $33, but I did talk to them and they took that off. But that's just crazy, I think. Yeah, I was taking notes because I had intentions on um, contacting the credit union. So thanks, Baba, for reminding me. 
Very cool. Very cool. Certainly. All right. Listen, uh, I want to thank you, uh, Celeste. Uh, obviously, everybody has has benefited from this talk, and this this uh, YouTube video should be up in a couple of days, so you can uh, re uh, re uh, view it. Also, as uh, Brother Keedy had pointed out, you could save your PowerPoint as a PDF, and um, and and send it out to Sugar D that way. Yeah, I'm going to try and figure out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So even though I used to program computers, my skills at the current things are not great. I'm you know a what, dinosaur. You, you, you know what? What you were describing was the world that I was in. And uh, okay. so, uh, yeah, uh, you, you would you would write all these uh, 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 subroutines and, and and input statements and all of these and all these things. Now you don't have to do that. And you uh, don't. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so and my nephew, who is in his 40s, maybe even early 50s now, laughs at me when we talked about stuff. And my grandkids have no idea what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Or what used to happen. You know, they do their whole world online. Sure. Sure. Well, you were a pioneer that uh, made it possible uh, for us all uh, to. <laughs> hey, listen, I want to, before we go, I want to share some things uh, uh, with us, uh, with, with each one. Uh, so I want to. I want to talk about this. I see beautiful Sister Mariana there. Hi. Yeah, Mar Mariana's there. Yeah. yeah, Sister Mariana. I've been watching and appreciating it. This, for, this session for me was just confirmation that I'm doing the right thing. I got a beautiful credit score. I'm debt free. I'm chugging away. So don't give up on the younger generations. We learn it and we want to be credit geniuses. We want to be uh, prosperity geniuses. So I just, I'm, I'm glad to have this knowledge and reminder. Thank you so much for your presentation. So you're welcome. Yes, indeed. Hey, listen, so um, just some miscellaneous stuff. We were talking about uh, the weather uh, in Sacramento and uh, here on, on uh, the left here is, is the way it looked the day after the rains. In, in, a, in a lot of places. This is Highway 99. And uh, in the downtown- the Sacramento River. It, no, no. But the Davis Causeway is still open or- The Davis Causeway is open, but they just they just opened a portion of 99, which was down uh, by San Joaquin um, County. So uh, mm. yeah, uh, that's the way it looked. And then uh, because of uh, the soil, uh, not, you know, not a lot of rain for three or four years. The trees, uh, the roots stay uh, more toward the surface. And but when 60 mile per hour winds blow, this is what happens. So uh, these are just some things that happen midtown uh, Sacramento. Uh, you know, so you could be, uh, you know, you could have your car parked on the street and a tree could fall on it or, you know, like this guy, or, or, or your house. Uh, some of the uh, homeless, one of the homeless uh, uh, ladies, uh, a tent fell, fell on her, uh, a tree fell on her tent. And, oh. and she, uh, she died uh, in that. So that's, you know, just a little, you know, yeah, this is what's been happening with us. But I, I still want to say that we in California are weather wimps compared to the rest of the country, all the things that, that go on uh, there. Um, uh, on the 29th, I'm going to be uh, giving the message at we'll say Oakland and Holly Street. So here's the flyer, I put it in the chat. And also uh, brother Lee Davis, uh, him and his wife, Betty are members of we'll say, and uh, they have a store uh, that they've had for, for a number of years, and they're actually getting ready to close. It's called Culture Collection. So you might want to get in before they uh, close. But Lee, I asked him uh, a number of years ago to, if he would, create a Canara 
in the shape of the boat of Ra. And, and this is what he came up with. And uh, this is in my office. I have this picture of the universe. So it's kind of apropos, uh, the boat of Ra. Uh, so I, I'm bringing it to Oakland. Um, I'm, I'm taking it back though, uh, to, to light the Kanara uh, on that day on the 29th. So that's one of a kind? Yeah, it's one of a kind. But I think if we, you know, take pictures, somebody else can re, uh, uh, you know, construct it, other people. As you, as you are probably aware, Brother Katabasi, our first Kanara was made by Brother Levi Boynton. That's right. And, and he made, he made the, the Kanara with the, uh, it, it was a pyramid with Africa in the center. Mm -hmm. And then he also made the canara. It was an onk, and it was detachable. You could take the onk in and out of the canara. So there, there are people out there. Um, Brother Bolton uh, here in Sacramento, who's now an ancestor, did did the uh, chairs and the podiums in Oakland and Sacramento. You know, you know, for the ministers to sit sit mm -hmm. down. So he did he did and he did some canaras as well. I don't have any uh, abilities on this, but if someone can see this, uh, that would be great if we could if we could get uh, some more uh, made like that. Yeah. The also, person who made that, who's closing their store, are they doing it because they want to retire or was the store not supported? Well, uh, a, a little bit of both. Uh, you know, it's it's seasonal up and down, and they've been doing it for a number of years. Originally, they were uh, in education. They were in the uh, Sacramento Unified School District, and um, and, and I'm, I'm not sure in what capacity. I know that I know that Betty was a teacher at one time, but Lee was also in administration in the school district. And, and then they retired and, and uh, we had a mall here called the Florin Mall and they had a store there for a number of years and then it closed. And then uh, we have a, another section now, it's called the African Marketplace on, um, actually that's on Florin as well, but in a different location. And uh, they have a store there right now. You can call them, you can look, in their, you can look uh, them up online. It's called Culture Collection. And- uh, okay. And they, they have a lot of great things uh, there. I was just there Saturday uh, picking this Canara. So, yep. I'll check them out. And for tomorrow's SOS, part of the things that we're going to be discussing is the eye of Heru. We're going to be focusing on, on this. It's a type of meditation. It's mentioned in the uh, pyramid text of, of Winnis. And uh, so uh, I'll just give you a heads up what we're going to be discussing. We're also going to mention a, a few things about Mott. So uh, if you'd like to join us tomorrow at, at six uh, on this Zoom for a study of sacred scriptures, uh, we, we will be glad to have you. And then uh, I got this picture from um, Shingarai, I think. And uh, this is Sister Valeria. Uh, many of you uh, know Sister Valeria. Let me, let, me, um, let me see if I can make this bigger. Uh, this picture bigger. So there, there's Sister Valeria's family. There's uh, Shakilia, Shingarai, and Shambalia, and Fidel, her husband. And these must be her grandchildren. Must be grandkids. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Nice okay. Family. Okay. Glad you all could uh, could be with us. This is, uh, you know, as as we're developing our circles, bringing our circles together. This is one of our uh, circle moments. This and the. Uh, uh, First Fridays and uh, study of sacred scriptures. Uh, we were talking about ministries uh, earlier in the week, uh, the, the ministers and, and really our commissions are our ministries. Really our, our commissions are our ministries. And so we wanna keep on reaching out to you, 
want to thank everyone for coming. Let's see, there are a couple of things in the chat. I don't, I don't want to miss. Okay, Brother Damani says, great pre presentation. And uh, Sugar D says, this was great, fantastic, Sister Celeste. So uh, thank you once again for um, enlightening us and uh, love to see everyone tomorrow. Uh, Uncle Job Saneb, take care, live up.